In this lecture, we're going to learn about two more applications of elasticity um, that we can use to, again, prove some of the things that we learned about in Unit 2 related to demand. So this lecture focuses on cross-price elasticity and income elasticity. Cross-price elasticity of demand measures the responsiveness of the demand for a good to a change in the price of a substitute or complement good. So um, cross-price elasticity of demand, again, is comparing two different things. For example, um, maybe I wanted to see how a change in the price of cereal would affect the quantity demanded for milk. And then by using that data, we can um, observe whether the two goods are complements or substitutes based on um, the results. So the formula that we use is the exact same formula as for price elasticity of demand, but with, with one or two um, small changes. First of all, the percentage change in quantity demanded is still in the numerator, and the percentage change in the price is still in the denominator, so dollars in the denominator, as usual. But now we're comparing the percentage change in quantity of good A to the percentage change in price of good B. So we're going to have one thing in the numerator, another thing in the denominator but still quantity in the numerator, price in the denominator. The second thing that's a big change here is that we no longer drop the negative sign. So it's no longer the absolute value of our answer that we're looking for um, because the negative sign will matter. The negative sign helps give us a clue to how to interpret this data. So you do not drop the negative sign. Um, now this is this is the generic formula, the general version, but um, when you're plugging in numbers, you still have to plug it into that very specific formula that we already learned about. So it'd be um, quantity minus quantity one over the average of the two quantities of good A in the numerator, and then price minus price one over the average of the two prices of good B in the denominator. So here's an example. Suppose the price of cereal increases from three to four dollars. As a result, the quantity demanded of milk for a family decreases from three to two gallons per week. With all else being equal, the cross elasticity of demand for milk with respect to the price of cereal is, um, so again, we're gonna plug our numbers into this formula. And please note here, um, in the denominator for quantity here, it's um, that is supposed to be a plus sign there. There is a plus, but it's very, very hard to see. So um, I just want to make sure that you don't think this is a typo and get the formula wrong. Also in the denominator for price here, that is also a plus sign. It's very, very hard to see. <laughs> for some reason that's not showing up. But it, So it's quantity minus quantity one of milk over quantity plus quantity one of milk divided by two. So the average of the two quantities. And then price minus price one of cereal over price plus price one of cereal divided by two, so the average of the two cereals. Um, and when we plug in our numbers then, it would be three minus two over three plus two divided by two in the numerator for quantities. And for prices, it'd be three minus four over three plus four divided by two. So when we do the math here, um, it turns out to be 0.4 over negative 0.3 which gives us an answer of negative 1.3. So that's great, but what does that mean? Well, when cross price elasticity of demand for two goods is positive, that means that the two goods are substitutes. And when cross price elasticity of demand for two goods is negative, that means that the two goods are complements. That got a little cut off at the bottom there, but a positive number means the goods are substitutes. A negative number means the goods are complements. Um, so an easy way to remember this is with price elasticity of demand that we that we learned in a previous lecture, we know that that answer would always be negative, which is why we drop the negative sign. So when we're looking at cross price elasticity of demand, if the answer is negative, that means these two goods go together like they're the same thing, you know, so that answer will be negative. But we don't drop the negative sign because that's what tells us that they're complements. Um, looking at this graphically, um, if we're looking at the demand for Walkmans, 
I think we need to update this example here. Walkmans are a little bit old school, but that's all right. Walkman demand will be affected um, when the price of a CD player increases. So a CD player is a substitute for a Walkman. Therefore, demand for a Walkmans will increase when the price of, substitute, um, of the substitute goes up. So demand for Walkmans will shift to the right, which means that there's positive cross elasticity. Oops, one more time there. All right, and demand for Walkmans will be negatively affected or negative cross elasticity when the price of a tape, which is a complementary good for Walkmans, rises. So, um, you know, you use tapes with Walkmans, that's how you get your music, um, and therefore there's a negative um, answer, and therefore we know that they're complements. So, positive number means they're substitutes, negative number means they're complements. All right, and final um, application of elasticity that we're going to learn about here is income elasticity of demand. Income elasticity of demand res uh, measures the responsiveness of the demand to a change in income. So um, basically we're asking, when people's incomes go up or down, how does that affect how much they buy of certain things? And what can that tell us about what type of good that is? So if you think back to Unit 2, we learned about normal and inferior goods, um, and that's going to come into play here as well. And we can also tell by the answer um, that we get when we do this calculation if the good is a necessity or a luxury. The formula is, again, same formula, but now instead of price, we're using income because income is the variable that we're studying. So income elasticity of demand is percentage change in the quantity demanded of whatever item it is that we're analyzing over the percentage change in consumer income. So notice it's still dollars in the denominator, but now instead of price, it's income for our dollar figure. And notice that it is not the absolute value of the answer. So again, the negative sign matters. Don't drop the negative sign if you have one. Make sure that you um, leave it in there. All right, so there are two different types of goods as we learned in unit two. Normal goods are goods for which when your income goes up, you buy more of them, or if your income goes down, you buy less of them. And inferior goods are goods that you buy less of when you make more money. So for example, a normal good would be steaks, and an inferior good would be ramen noodles or something like that. So an increased income raises the quantity demanded for normal goods, but lowers the quantity demanded for inferior goods. Again, this is review. We are all familiar with the song, The Bare Naked Ladies. If I had a million dollars, I had to throw this in here because I love this song. So this song talks about all the things that these guys would do if they had a million dollars, all the things they would buy, um, you know, a fur coat, an exotic pet, etc and all these things that they're talking about are normal goods because if they had more money they'd buy more of them until we get down to the bottom line here if I had a million dollars we wouldn't have to eat craft dinner so craft dinner would be an inferior good all right so let's look at what our answers or coefficients of elasticity mean when we when we use this formula and then we'll do an example all right if your answer for income elasticity of demand is a positive number. Anytime it's a positive number, we're going to know that it's a normal good because as income increases, uh, you buy more and as income decreases, you buy less. So when your income elasticity of demand is greater than one, not only does it mean that it's normal, but it's also income elastic, income elastic again because the number is greater than one. So income elastic goods are luxury goods. Things that you, you know, you're buying just because you can. <laughs> if your elasticity, um, income elasticity of demand is positive but less than one, that means that your, the good is a, an, an income inelastic good. So these would be necessities, food, clothing, etc. So again, any positive number is a normal good. If it's greater than one, it's income elastic, which is a luxury. If it's less than one, it's income inelastic, which is a necessity. 
And if your answer is a negative number, that means it's an inferior good. Um, so as your income goes up, you buy less, or as your income goes down, you buy more. So that's how you interpret your answer. So let's end with an example here. Suppose average income in the country as a whole increases from $30,000 a year to $35,000 a year over a decade. If the quantity demanded of coffee increases from 10,000 pounds per year to 10,500 pounds per year over the same time, even with no change in the price of coffee, then we would conclude that the income elasticity of demand for coffee is, okay, again, here's our formula. So um, it's percentage change in price over percentage change in income, dollars in the denominator. Um, I again want to point out that it's quantity minus quantity one of coffee so 10,000 minus 10,500, and then quantity plus, it's hard to see that plus there, but that is a plus, quantity plus quantity one of coffee, so 10,000 plus 10,500 um, divided by two to give us the average of the two quantities of coffee. And in the denominator here, we have income minus income one, so 30,000 minus $35,000, and income plus income one, so 30,000 plus 35,000, divided by two to give us the average of the two incomes. So when you crank that out, you get negative 0 0.05 divided by negative 0.15 or positive 0.33 for our answer. So what does that mean? Well, based on what we just learned, since the answer is positive, we know it's a normal good. And since the answer is less than one, we know it's considered income inelastic or it's considered like a necessity. Um, this kind of makes sense for coffee because this is something that people tend to be addicted to. So coffee drinkers tend to drink coffee every day no matter what. All right, um, so just in conclusion, these final two applications of elasticity that we learned about um, are different than price elasticity of demand because the negative signs in the answer do mean something. So the generic formula is the same, but again, it's not the absolute value of the answer for these two applications. You, you do consider the negative sign. Um, and just remember, always it's always dollars in the denominator, um, and you should be in good shape. All right, and that is the end.